I've been reviewing video games for a few years now, and I feel like I've hit a turning point. I've finally wrapped up the storyline that's been going through my videos, I've worked up to 1100 subscribers, finally got around to putting some art in that stupid spot on my profile, and I've had and recovered from about three psychotic episodes. We've come a long way from The Last Ninja, and now I'm feeling kinda nostalgic. We've taken a look at a lot of crappy games together, and I think it's time to recount some of the crappiest of them all. So these are the top 10 worst games that I've reviewed as of February 19th, 2015. I would never have gotten this far without you guys. This one's for you. And me. But mostly you. Dishonorable Mention, Dungeon Dice Monsters. I came within an inch of putting this game at number 10, but I've gotten so many STUPID comments insisting this game isn't so bad that I just had to bring it up to be an insufferable jackass. A strategy game is only as good as its AI, and Dungeon Dice Monsters AI is just north of brain dead. It is ridiculously easy to manipulate the AI into standing still and letting you win, because the AI will almost never attack something it can't kill in one hit, and it will never set foot on your dungeon path if there's a single monster guarding your Die Master. Most of the time you can march on the AI's Die Master and win a game virtually unopposed, because doing common sense things will cause the AI to stand still and just let you win. Combine the brain dead AI with the fact that you have to play extensively to unlock new pieces, and you have an extremely long and extremely boring game. However, I've been told that the game's AI is not a problem that warrants bitching about for the bulk of the review, because the game is supposed to be played in multiplayer against human and presumably non-stupid opponents. To that I say, if you think it's perfectly okay, okay that this game is 100% useless unless I convince my friends to all buy the game, then convince them to play the game long enough to build a decent deck, and then convince them to play the game with me repeatedly on the few occasions that I see any of them, and the game effectively should never be played at any other time, and you think that's okay? That you are a blight upon the gaming community and you need to play less Call of Duty. Number 10, Bionicle. Bionicle is one of the most minimal effort games that I have ever played. In the Bionicle Mask of Light movie, Liwa can fly, not hover for a few seconds, fly. Kopaka is Iceman on steroids. Onua can summon earthquakes. Tahu can channel his fire powers in any manner of ways. The Toa have powers that would make for a ridiculously kick-ass game if the game were in the hands of someone other than EA. None of the Toa can do anything except throw a few energy balls before they run out of power and have to stop and recharge. Two of the Toa don't even get full levels. About 90% of the people who bought this crap fest, at least, were fans of Bionicle, excited to finally play as the Toa, and they were treated to inconceivably depowered and downright weak versions of their favorite characters, and two of those said characters barely even show up. Not only is the game a complete bastardization of the Bionicle series, the game is bland and generic as hell. A basic platformer with but can barely even be called combat, it's shorter than Portal, the ending completely contradicts the main series, the game is a GameCube title, but its graphics look like an early PS1 or Nintendo 64 game. It has a huge difficulty spike near the end with a long surfing level that has no checkpoints and a flying level with shit controls, and there's basically no story to speak of. It all adds up to another signature EA travesty. Number 9. An eight-way tie between Iron Man 2, Wipeout, Men in Black, Alien Crisis, Green Lantern, Rise of the Manhunters, Nickelodeon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Thor, God of Thunder, Deathly Hollows Part 1, and Deathly Hollows Part 2. <sighs> Maybe I'm cheating, lumping all these games together, but these games all have the same problem. They're underdeveloped licensed games with bland as hell gameplay and unpolished mechanics. Some of them feel downright unfinished because of how mismatched the mechanics are. Another thing these games all have in common, they're all boring as hell. They're all so damn easy and monotonous. Were I to pick a top dog of this mangy pack, or bottom dog as the case may be, it'd probably be Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a game with essentially one-button combat, the same enemies recycled endlessly, hilariously stupid AI, a length of three hours, and its only concession to a difficulty curve is that later levels give you less of those health power-ups that you didn't need anyway. I've read on TV tropes that the game isn't pathetically easy, it's just geared toward younger gamers. Right, and this game's not crap, it's just what all the naughty kids got when Santa ran out of coal. Number 8. Mission Impossible. 
Mission Impossible transcends the usual low standard set by movie licensed games by being almost scientifically engineered to piss off its player. Several of the game's levels consist of you wandering around the level, trying to figure out where the game has hidden your objectives, trying to figure out what the game even wants you to do, or trying to figure out how to get to your objective without setting off one of the thousands of instant kill death traps the game has set for you, and replaying the same level two dozen times since you have to start the level over every time you stumble into a trap. The game almost approaches being fun in the small handful of levels where you just run through and shoot people, but the game's lousy mechanics and stiff controls make it so even basic combat is just a pain in the ass. But by far the worst thing about Mission Impossible is that it's pretty much designed to waste your time. Every level is jam-packed with things that kill you immediately with absolutely zero warning, and the only way to advance through the game is to die on the same level over and over again until you've found all of the traps. Some people have posted comments on my Mission Impossible review telling me they couldn't get past the first level, and trust me, they were the lucky ones. And yes, I am now aware that the Mission Impossible Nintendo 64 game is based on the first Mission Impossible movie. This makes my review either a poster child for a critical research failure, or a scathing indictment of making a movie licensed game that sees fit to skimp on story. Take your pick. Number 7. Hercules The Legendary Journeys an amateur developer's pathetic attempt at ripping off The Legend of Zelda, Hercules The Legendary Journeys just makes you think every step of the way that the people who made this game should not be making video games. You spend pretty much the entire first half of the game doing nothing but walking between villages, collecting MacGuffins while absolutely nothing happens. Like the game developers only made a third of an actual game, and then relentlessly padded out the game until it might possibly pass as a finished product. The second half of the game has a little bit of life in it as you navigate through three labyrinths, but the ridiculously basic combat and the fact that there are essentially two enemies with texture swaps across the entire game means that even when the game is good, it's not very good. A pair of absurdly broken boss fights near the end of the game is just the rotten moldy cherry atop the shit Sunday. This game was so bad that you couldn't actually buy it when it was released. It was only sold to blockbusters who would then rent it out and now they're floating around used game stores. Soon after I finished Hercules, I picked up Blues Brothers 2000, aka the same developer attempting to rip off Super Mario 64. I played it for a few days, put it down, and I dread the day that I inevitably have to sit down, finish it, and review it. One of the most aggressively boring games I've ever played from one of the worst developers I've ever seen, Hercules is only useful for one thing, proving that anyone can make a video game, but most people shouldn't. Number 6. 1912 Titanic Mystery for those who haven't seen the review, Titanic Mystery is a game where you stare at a screen full of poorly photoshopped images looking for 22 randomly selected items for about 3 hours, in between which there are about 10 puzzles that are recycled into 30 puzzles and you can skip them with pretty much no penalty. They made and sold this on discs, in stores, on the Wii. It's also on the PC and the Nintendo DS. This game has absolutely zero business being a video game. This game is just a series of 30 screens that you click on, and that's it. Saying that this thing has gameplay is like saying a McDonald's cheeseburger has vegetables. Technically true, but misleading. It's a shame, because there are a few things about this game that I really like. The paintings showing the various sections of the Titanic are beautiful. The music is fantastic, evoking wonder and mystery underscored by tragedy, and the story is excellent. If you just look at the paintings and listen to the music, it's a very calming and soothing experience. I actually looked for a Let's Play or some kind of video about this game so I could enjoy the game's assets without having to play it. Shocker, I didn't find any Let's Play, because the bottomlessly stupid internet has finally found its standards. No matter no matter how much I like its production, at the end of the day this is a video game, which means you have to actually play it. And Titanic Mystery is the most boring ass game that I have ever played. The reason it's not higher on the list? I'd rather be bored than enraged. Number 5. Pokemon Stadium 2 I don't care how many people who have never actually played the game before tell me to go screw myself over this review, Pokemon Stadium 2 is awful. This game is specifically designed to be unplayable. You have the option of playing this game either using Pokemon you've raised on a Pokemon Game Boy game, or you can play using rentals. Except the rentals are all programmed with useless attacks, and stats that are at least 15% lower than they should be. Pretty much any rental you use will get curb stomped by most enemies. 
series, you stand no chance of winning with them. I get that the Pokemon Stadium games are just glorified expansions for the Game Boy games, but Pokemon Stadium 1 was at least playable without a homegrown team. You are simply not allowed to play Pokemon Stadium 2 unless you've got teams on your Pokemon Game Boy games ready to use, which requires hours upon hours of grinding since there are so many sets of tournaments with different rules about what levels your Pokemon can be. And this is all assuming you even have a transfer pack to use your Game Boy games in the first place. In short, you are required to play another game for hours before you can even think about playing Pokemon Stadium 2, because if you don't bring your own Pokemon, your ass will get kicked to Kingdom Come. What makes it even worse, and there's no way Nintendo foresaw this, is that the Gold, Silver, and Crystal versions all lose their ability to hold a save after 7 years, which means unless you manually change your cartridge's battery, you can't use a Game Boy game unless you turn to the Red, Blue, and Yellow versions. And then, to top it all off, Pokemon Stadium 2 has a glitch that erases your Game Boy cartridge's save game if you're using a Yellow version. It's happened to two friends of mine, the battery of my game did not run dry like everyone says it did. This this is a recurring glitch and it's kind of a massive problem when you can't play the game without a Game Boy game and the game ERASES GODDAMN GAME BOY GAMES! FUCK POKEMON STADIUM 2, I DON'T CARE WHAT ANYBODY SAYS, THIS GAME IS GARBAGE! Number 4, Batman Dark Tomorrow. I recently read a really good graphic novel called Batman Earth 1. It takes place in an alternate universe where Batman doesn't have any martial arts training and he can barely fight, and the only gadget he has is a grapple gun that doesn't work. I'm telling you this because the only possible excuse I can think of for why Dark Tomorrow exists is that Kemco was purposefully trying to adapt Batman Earth 1 into a video game. You can't fight because the combat system is broken. The game has a stealth system that completely doesn't work because the enemies have supernatural peripherals vision, enemies travel in clustered groups you can't sneak up on, and the levels are designed with no cover. You can't even walk because the cameras keep changing and wildly adjusting the directions on the control stick, and the game doesn't let you turn in place, instead forcing you to run in a tiny circle whenever you try to move a direction other than straight. The controls for your gadgets are so broken that they're nigh unusable, on the rare occasions you even need to use them because only two of the gadgets are used on a regular basis anyway. Navigating the early levels that require jumping is ridiculous because the game only lets you climb ledges when it feels like it, probably because every object in the game is coated in an inches thick invisible wall and the game's physics engine has no idea what to do with your movement when you touch it. Every moment of playing this game is painful because absolutely nothing works the way it's supposed to. The only reason this game is not higher on the list is that I was actually able to beat it without turning to outside assistance. The game is almost self-aware of how bad it is, and it's full of exploits that make it piss easy to make progress. That is, until you get to one of the worst flying levels ever put to code. The final insult is that the story makes absolutely no sense. It turns out Ra's al Ghul orchestrated the first two acts of the game to keep Batman away from his master plan, a master plan that Batman would never have found out about if Ra's al Ghul hadn't invented distraction to keep him away from it in the first place! You'll, you'll pretty much have to look up a walkthrough to figure out how to get the game's one good ending, because the game doesn't tell you how to get it anywhere. So most people played through the entire game just to see this. No! Kind of sums up the whole game, doesn't it? Number 3 Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. Aquaman Battle for Atlantis is a game that is broken on so many levels that you can tell there was not an ounce of give a damn anywhere in the entire game. The controls are unresponsive, you can't get combos to work except by dumb luck, and the directions on the control stick seem to be assigned at random every fight, and the AI is programmed to cheap shot you to death because despite being built as a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, more than one enemy is allowed to attack you at once. But the thing is, even if this game did work the way it's designed, if the controls actually did what you told them to do and the AI wasn't broken, this game would still suck ass. This game is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and there are effectively three enemies in the entire game. And even then, there's almost no difference between the enemies. The entire game is basically fighting one person over and over and over again. The gameplay never evolves, never changes, you just keep punching and punching and punching for four hours. 
Why does this game even exist? The developers clearly didn't care about it. The game does nothing with Aquaman's powers to warrant building an entire game. The story is as bland as can be imagined. It wasn't to cash in on a popular franchise because Aquaman isn't a popular franchise. Most people only know who Aquaman is because everybody makes fun of him. So why even make this game if you are going to pour so little effort into it? You fail! This game is fail! You are become error! Number 2, Superman 64. Everybody's heard about how bad this game is, but unless you've played it or watched my extensive three-part review, seriously, you have no idea how atrocious this game really is. It is even worse than the legends proclaim. You already know that the controls are beyond garbage and more sensitive than a menstruating female, the game's engine is so shitty you can barely see four feet in front of your face, and half the game is just flying through rings with the garbage controls, which is about as far away from fun as you can possibly get. What you may not know is that the game is riddled with glitches that force you to restart levels, or even skip right to the end of them if you figure out how to abuse the glitch correctly. The objectives in the main levels make absolutely no sense, and are often so poorly explained that you have absolutely no idea what you're supposed to do, forcing you to navigate levels lost and alone until you stumble onto what you're supposed to do by accident. The levels are labyrinthine and a pain in the ass to navigate, the combat is shit, made worse by the abysmal controls, and the fact that Superman bleeds health when he's hit by anything. The bulk of the game is spent wandering through the level, dying over and over again, trying to figure out what in the living hell the game wants you to do. So the confusion builds and builds, and you're forced to play the same level over and over, because none of the indoor levels have any checkpoints, and you start over every time that you die. While you do have access to Superman's powers, they're all so depowered that they're completely useless. People want to play as Superman to use his powers, and all of his powers require ammo that runs out in like a few seconds and even at that, they do almost nothing. The game is so poorly designed that one of the game's superpowers does absolutely nothing and it has no function in the game. The final level will randomly glitch so that you drop dead for absolutely no reason. The bosses, titans on par with Superman for strength, just walk straight up to you and punch you, except for the final boss, who has no AI and just stands in place while you punch him to death. Also, I'm pretty sure most people don't know the game has a multiplayer mode, and it sucks ass too! You will fly into your opponent, sit still, and fire until one of you dies just to get the match over with. There is absolutely nothing redeeming about this game. Not one positive thing to say about it, other than I never have to touch it again. Number 1. Air Control you have no idea how depressed I am that Superman 64 got booted from the top of this list, and instead I have to talk about the Mount Everest of shit and failure that shouldn't even deserve the honor of being called a video game. Because Air Control is not a game. It is a simulation on the effects of extended drug use. Most of the game's levels just drop you into an environment with no objective, so you just wander to the other side of the plane and the level ends. The game's engine is so shitty that only one enemy can ever spawn into the level once. In the levels that actually have an enemy, you don't have to actually kill him to win the level. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than getting the Tommy gun to reload. The game regularly glitches so that the mouse controls lock up, the main menu doesn't display unless you bring up a different window and then go back to the game. Changing game modes or restarting a game mode requires exiting the entire game because going back to the menu locks up the game and using the pause menu's restart option locks up all of your controls. Dying in a flying level either crashes the game or it forces you to exit the game entirely, since we've already established that restarting doesn't work. Besides the fact that the flight controls are so horrid that dying is all you will do. What kept me from finishing the game is that the first person flying levels have no walls, so if you hit the edge of the map, and you spawn facing the edge of the map, you quite literally fall off the face of the earth and have to restart the game. The game is so bad that you can't actually buy it anymore. The game was kicked off of Steam. Do you have any idea what a game has to do to get kicked off of Steam? That's like being kicked off Fox News for being too conservative. The unpatched, glitch to hell PC version of Daikatana is on Steam. Water Simulator, a game where you literally do nothing but traverse a barren island the size of my basement, is on Steam. But Air Control is where they drew the line. That is scary. But that's not the whole story. 
See, Markiplier did a Let's Play of Air Control, and he actually got far enough to see the game's end credits. It turns out that the game's developer, Killjoy Studios, has a grand total of one employee. Some guy with a Middle Eastern name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. A few fun facts, Killjoy got all of the people on his friends list on Steam to post fake positive reviews of his game to disguise it as a hidden gem. He shut down any comments criticizing the game and argued with anyone who called the game out for not being a flight sim by insisting he'd never said the game was a flight sim, even as the game's tag specifically had it labeled a flight sim. And he at one point claimed he'd removed all copyrighted material from the game when all he did was go through the forums and delete all posts with evidence of the copyrighted material. It gets better. Killjoy changed his name to Kiss Incorporated and released an even worse game called Zen Fish Simulator on Steam Early Access, a game so atrocious that he actually publicly apologized for it and took it down. Though the game had a crap ton of copyrighted music in it, so I hypothesize he only took it down to save face before Steam took it down for him. But the worst thing about Air Control is that it is not the only case of a developer on Steam crapping out a half-finished game and then censoring the backlash. It's not even the worst offender. Other developers go so far as to issue illegal copyright takedowns on YouTube videos criticizing their games, which puts said channel in danger of being shut down forever. Day 1 Gary's Incident, Earth Year 2066, Guys of the Wolf, The War Z, The Slaughtering Grounds, all worse examples of developer douchebaggery than Air Control and many of them arguably worse games. And it's only gotten worse with Steam introducing Early Access. See, in Early Access, developers put out prototype games, allegedly to gather user feedback, but the shadier developers just use Early Access as an excuse to sell barely even started alphas they made in an afternoon to make a quick buck. Only about a quarter of Early Access games actually get finished, according to statistics. Steam is full of shit like this, to the point that I've considered announcing my Steam name to see if anybody wants to send me donations to review, but I shudder to think of the crap I'd end up reviewing if I did that. The sad fact is that for every bro force, there are a hundred grass simulators. For every This War of Mine, there are a thousand Gary's Incidents. For every genuine indie talent like Scott Cawthon, there are a dozen Killjoys. Either con men looking to screw you out of your money, or deluded bastards who think there's God's gift to gaming, but couldn't make a good game if they were given the source code to Metroid Prime. As for Air Control, it's just the worst of Steam, everything that's wrong with it, wrapped in one ugly and thankfully gone forever package. And there you have it, my top 10 worst games that I've reviewed so far. Thanks to everyone who continues to watch my videos, and let's see if we can bump a few titles off this list, shall we?